Hello everyone, sorry if you hear any noise and the washer is going again, but I'm a clean person. So, and it's hot in here uh, because I've been busy all day working, doing everything. I am going to take some vacation days, but... Uh, and I found this in my storage. I had given, I, I forgot and I had it, so it's coming in handy. And what it is, it's cooler in here than it is outside, so there's no air. <laughs> so, there's that. And I'm wearing the Godfather today. So, I'm going to make you an offer that you cannot refuse. <laughs> Not really. Anyway, so, first topic at hand. And I really want to stress this. And I'm a gun owner too, so all of you weird people who are, let me just speak. And let me turn the freaking light on because, <laughs> there. There we go. Turned it up. I believe there's nothing wrong with owning a firearm. I do not think felons should be owning firearms or people who have demonstrated dangerous behaviors. Stalking, well, in my state, you can't own a, I think it's not just mine, but other states, if you have a history of domestic abuse, you can't own firearms or they take your ammunition and everything away during the court process. Violent crimes, harassment, stalking, things of that nature. If you have had a history of those things, there are consequences to your behavior. Yes, I believe there's people in this world who deserve second chances. But even in that second chances, in that second chance, there are consequences to your behavior. That's just the way the world works. And I don't believe in the warped Christianity church of house bullshit of you can keep doing horrible things to people and we reinstate you and reinstate you and we never see, we sit here and say, well, we can't see the hearts and minds of men, but yet we're trusting you enough to let you back into your position of power or in the, this church at all. When you've demonstrated nothing but harassment, stalking, bullying, abuse of any type. And for people who say stalking is not a violent crime, it is. Stalking is a violent crime. It is psychological warfare. And it is murdering someone in slow motion. It's uh, psychological damage. That's what they do to the, uh, prisoners of war. Psychological damage. So then you'd have to say, well, prisoners of war aren't actually under harm when they're playing mind games with them. That is damage to people. It is psychological damage to play games with people's minds. It's certainly damage to try to distance them, to separate people from community, to make people in fear to be around this person who's doing nothing wrong, or whoever the person is, who's doing nothing wrong because people don't want to be stopped because of this person. It's, it's, or reputations being damaged. That is violence. It's just a different form of violence. That's no different. No, that thought process is no more different than saying financial abuse or psychological abuse or emotional abuse within a relationship is not domestic violence. It is. It is. Oh, that's like saying the only way to abuse someone is physically punching them or shooting them or stabbing them. No, it's not. Look at Stockholm. That is mental violence. And when we, that happened, it opened the door for dem, to, to study domestic violence because that's what happens in domestic violence, Stockholm Syndrome. Love bombing. So, again, and, and it's always with especially like serial killers, stalkers, people like that who operate in secret their crimes don't get found out for a long time. We don't find out for years that they've killed anybody if they're a serial killer. And they've owned guns the entire time. Take Ed Kemper, who shot his grandparents, both of them. He was just able to, to number one, get released, even though the psychologist said that shouldn't happen. The psychiatrist who wants to play God thought 
he should be released. He never should have been. And he was just allowed to wreak havoc on society because they dupe people. And all the people who want to, except for that case, the psychologists were absolutely right. Psychologists, there are very bad psychologists who don't know anything. And a lot of therapists and psychologists are just as mentally ill or mentally disturbed or their lives are just in a much of mess as their clients. Actually, like I've had people who I saw in the past, and I stopped seeing them, who I sh should have been helping them. <laughs> like, and I think that's the dryer or washer, so. And really, if we want to talk about the gun issue, owning a gun is a privilege. It is not a right. If it was a so-called right, just like owning a home. Home ownership is a privilege. Freedom of speech, there's limits to. Just like home ownership. People can plan to put a railroad right through your house and force you out. <laughs> home owner zoning, they could zone you right out of your house. That's a, home ownership is a privilege. There is no right to own a home. There is no right to own a firearm. You do not have a right to safety. You don't. That you can, the weird far right conservatives can fool themselves into that. You do not have a right to safety. And then let me just get to the story I want to get to. If you cannot even hit the broad side of a barn, and of course I put the links below in the description because I can't put them on the screen because YouTube gets mad about that. You can't put too many anyway. If you cannot hit the broad side of a barn, if you don't know gun safety at all, to the point, I'm gonna say this, there is no such thing as a negligent di discharge. There is no such thing as accidentally pulling a trigger instead of doing something else. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as an accidental discharge. Just like there's no such thing as an unplanned pregnancy. There's no such thing. Just like you should know your firearm is every, let's say, let's start with handguns. I'm more familiar with those anyway. Because that's what people usually start out with and use for self-defense like going about on the town. If you, sorry, I have something in my eyes. If you didn't learn your weapon well enough to understand that pressure, what type of pressure will discharge the firearm, you didn't practice with that firearm. That's your fault. Anything that happens, you should be charged with murder. There's no such thing as shooting somebody by accident. If people want guns to be a right, then anything that happens with a firearm should get a stiff penalty. There, there is no such thing as accidents involve, involving firearms. There isn't. There isn't any excuses. There isn't one. Why do you not know your firearm? Why do you not know? And can I just say, it's so easy to say something is an accident. How do we know she didn't mean to shoot her daughter? Oh, I was just reaching for my keys, felt a firearm, and continued to pull the trigger. How do, was your daughter down here? Or if I'm in my car, I don't know if she was in the car. It was a camping trip. If my purse is here, and even if I negligently discharge, which there isn't such a thing, where is my daughter that I shoot her dead? Even so you don't understand, you should be careful. I, it doesn't exist. There is no such thing as a negligent discharge. There isn't one. There is no such thing as shooting somebody by accident. Once you purchase a firearm, it is your responsibility. Anything that happens is your responsibility. Just like there's no such thing as accidentally running somebody a pedestrian over. 
There's no such thing. Oh, I didn't see him. Where were you looking? There's a crosswalk right there. So you were either going so fast or weren't paying attention to anything. Unless you're going to say it was a kid who was like two feet tall and you didn't see them or a kid ran into the road. That's the only other excuse I could hear is the kid was running into the road or riding their bikes and weren't paying attention and just ran right in front of you or rode right in front of you. That's the only legitimate excuse I can understand for someone accidentally running somebody over. Other than that, there is no such thing as accidentally running somebody over. Because you are supposed to drive as if everybody else is an idiot. <laughs> really, you're supposed to drive as if everybody else is mentally, has just gotten lobotomies yesterday. That everybody else is an idiot and everybody else is blind. That's how you're supposed to drive. Now, is everybody perfect? No. But that's how you're supposed to drive. Back to the guns. If you do not understand safety of firearms, you should not own one. That's... Well, had to do some work. Anyway, so I do work in between these. But anyway, if you do not... If you have never put bullets downrange, you should not be carrying... I understand in the thought process of I'm going to learn this firearm and until I learn it, I'm not going to take it out. Like, I'm not going to conceal carry it until I learn it. So I'm going to be at the range and that's the only place I'm going to carry it. That's fine. But it makes no sense to not know the safety, not know, even if you went to the range, there's safety rules that if this is the direction of the, the way you're supposed to shoot it, your firearm needs to be f f facing, the barrel of your firearm needs to be facing that way. You don't get silly at a fire uh, a firing range or you get asked to leave. This is, these are not games. And this is my problem with people saying this is a right because they, they're not taking it seriously. Would you just jump in a car? I don't even like driving cars that I'm not used to. That's why people tend to buy cars that they're used to. Like, Right now, I'm used to cars that are higher off the ground because I have a, a, a Kia and I like the feel of an SUV. I don't want to go back to a sedan. People tend to do what they're used to. And then with firearms, it's repetition and, you know, that's how they train people in the military, the police. It's rep repetition in the military. You've got to take your firearm apart. You've got to learn all the pieces. I don't know if they do that now. They used to. World War II in Vietnam, they did. You have to take the, all the pieces apart. Learn your firearm. It is a part of you. This is your friend. This is going to keep you alive. It should be like a part of your body. Now, we're civilians, so it's not that serious. But, you know, it's not that dire of straits. But you should know what you're doing. You should know, if, I, if this is my firearm and I point it up like this, I'm probably going to go, I, I would be charged. Especially if I was outside. Why? Because, or if I was in an apartment building, I most certainly be. So I would be shooting somebody upstairs. And that has happened. Where babies have been killed. Who are in their um, bassinet or whatever. Their, their cribs. People who were minding their own business upstairs were shot dead. Who were just walking across the, their floor. If you put fire, you know, fire up in the air and you're outside, where's that bullet going to go? That's why it's illegal. That's why warning shots are a bad idea. That if you're not going to shoot anybody, you shouldn't be showing your firearm. Now, is there exceptions to the rules of that? Yes, in certain dire situations, especially for women. If a man is menacing me or threatening me, yeah, I might pull it out. And have it at a low ready. I said I want you to leave me alone. Go away. Because a lot of men don't realize that you're serious unless you bring out the birth, the birth list. Okay? Mine are birth is in Bethany's and Beatrice's. Until you bring out Beatrice, men think it's a game. And it's not. The three B's are never a game. Mm -mm. Not over here, it isn't. 
and my three B's don't discriminate. They don't care your sexuality. They don't care who you believe that you are. They don't care your racial makeup. They don't care your gender. They care that you get the fuck back. That's all they care about. That's, that's just what it is. If you want to think that's funny, that's on you. I would not think it's funny, but you're a grown adult and you can think whatever you want. <laughs> it's a free country, as they say. Anyway, that's the that's that. If you do not know how to operate operate a firearm, again, these are not a game. This isn't a oops, we'll try better next time. Imagine if that was somebody else's kid. If somebody accidentally shot my kid, you're gonna be seeing Jesus a lot earlier than you planned. Because you are negligent. You had no business with that firearm out in the public if you don't know how to work it. You've practiced at the range until you understand what you're doing. Just like learning how to drive. Do we put new drivers on busy five-lane highways where the speed limit is 75? No. Like, I don't know where people's brains are once you say something is a right. They don't care. They think it's a game. It's not a right, it's a privilege to own a firearm. That's why people who have lived a certain type of lifestyle, such as moi, don't get bothered when we get firearms and we're allowed to have them. Now, I didn't get my firearm from the streets. I bought mine from a store. So, play games if you want to. Anyway, now, next story you need to come get your kids the next story was a woman rightfully so shot a burglar who was 14 who was breaking into her home at first i thought he was breaking into her car but it seems he was bur burglarizing her home or maybe there was multiple of these teens and he must have been the one coming into the house and it was her and her children justify shoot and i rarely e agree with with shooting people i rarely do as most of the time there was another way of dealing with that and i also don't agree with people who antagonize situations until there's no other choice but to shoot people because you've enraged them but this justifies you it is not our fault that you don't know how to raise your children her children were where they were supposed to be with their mother in bed it is not our fault the rest of the citizenry especially the rest of the decent black citizenry it is not our fault that a lot of ghetto trash do not know how to raise their children it is not our fault i don't i there is no age limit or age or gender on the second amendment anybody can get it and i'm going to say this once you pick up a farm you are not, no longer a child and I'm not talking about people who go hunting in the woods with their dad. That's not what I'm talking, or their mom, or whoever it is, or granddad. Whatever the situation it is, I'm not talking about that. And you know I'm not talking about that. And I heard somebody say, and I agreed with it. It was about the kids who get into firearms of their parents. And she said, and, and, and people did. They, when she was growing up, she's a Gen Xer, she's in her 50s. We didn't dream of going into our parents' bedroom. And rifling, rifling around, no pun intended, and grabbing their firearms. Just like if you ever watched Little House on the Prairie. Pa's gun, his rifle, stayed where it was supposed to. Granted, in that story, there was all girls. But the girls are now just as bad. And they shoot people or they are parting themselves to stupidity. They're not getting away from it. And they're killing people. They're killing their best friends. Or other girls, the other woman, instead of realizing this man is playing the both of you and doesn't care about you. But back to the point, pause, you know, the guns stayed where they were back then. And this lady said, and I agree with her, if I cannot trust you to not take things in this house that do not belong to you, whether it is a pencil, whether it is a car, whether it is a TV, whatever it is, you should not be living here. And I don't disagree with that. If you are that sneaky and that disrespectful of your parents. Now, somewhere along the lines, and, and Judge Judy said this to a parent, 
And I agreed with it too. If your children have lost all respect for you, that is your fault. If your children have lost all respect for you as a parent, that is your fault. But if your children are just, and I, I'll say this, if you're, there is no, also no such thing as children falling in with the wrong crowd. That is within a parent's control. Children should not be communicating with people. They can't if you get them a, a dumb phone. If, they, if you are a teenager and you run off, you're not coming back. I hope your friends can take care of you. But it's too many times families have been murdered for money because now they have invite, they let the trouble bounce back and forth. I hope your family or that boyfriend help you or that girlfriend help you. They don't got the sense that God gave geese, but I hope they help you and save you from sex trafficking and all this other peril, which they won't. They'll leave you in the dirt to die. It reminds me of the actual Pinocchio. Children who do not listen or obey their parents sooner or later will regret it. And at some point it is on you. Me, when I get married, if, if you do not, my husband is here to protect me. And there's other stories of, I remember that story of the father who got shot to death arguing with his daughter's boyfriend. And the boyfriend shot him. She went right back with the boyfriend. She didn't care. And I'm sitting here without a husband. No. You chose your life. And I hope you have fun being in and out of prison, being a drug addict, or whatever peril befalls you. Because you, nobody sits in my husband's home and treats him with scorn. If he is such a fool, you should get out. If he is such a fool and such an idiot, number one, you're disrespecting me because you're insinuating that your mother would deal with an idiot. And I most certainly will not and would not. I don't deal with fools. I don't deal with limp-wristed idiots. I don't deal with boys who can't... Boys, little boys. I don't do that. Mama's nothing. So you're insulting me and my intelligence. Then you're insulting him and then thinking he's supposed to chase you across... No. I am his wife. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, sleeping in the bed with my husband under his guidance and leadership and his covering. If you choose not to, and you choose an idiot and a bumpkin because that's what you picked, and a violent uh, uh, hoodlum because that's the level of man that you choose, we are not the same in that regard. And don't ever think you are or that we are. Don't, don't ever think that. Then I hope you have fun begging and being pimped out. Don't ever come to me in, in my face. And when you're being pimped out, sold for drugs, and get in my face and tell me anything. How dare you? Absolutely not. My husband is to protect me and willing participants who are his children. And any of his children who think he is a fool and an idiot can get out. You are now on his own. You, it's just like God. If I think God is a fool, he doesn't force himself on people. Look at the parable of the prodigal son. If you want to go, here's your inheritance. You can go. He doesn't force you to stay. He doesn't force you to obey. He doesn't force you to do anything. That's the difference between God and, and Satan. Satan... When you deal with him, you will owe him, and you will owe him tenfold. God, you don't have to pay back, and he will not force you to do anything that you don't want to do. You can go. He will turn you over to a derelict mind. He will turn you over to the, the, to the desires of your heart. He will give it to you in abundance until it kills you. He will give it to you. All the kingdoms of the world. If that's what Satan is offering you, he'll let you have it. He's not, he doesn't want it, but you can have it. God does not force you to obey. God does not force anything on you. That is how parents are supposed to be. If you do not like what's going on here, and you think it is, it, all these buzzwords is narcissism, is abuse, is whatever, you can go. I hope you have fun being pimped out. I hope you have fun being abused by that 
piece of garbage and used by that woman for your money, I hope you have fun doing that. We're not going to force you to be in somewhere that's in a place that you deem so abusive. People who do not listen to my husband or myself do not have to be here in our presence. Why should we force you to be in such narcissistic presence? That, that's abuse, right? Then there's the door. And I hope you have fun. Now, you can always come back. Once you come back, if you come back, respectful. I don't throw things in people's faces. I don't, you know, as the Bible says, count record of wrongs. But you better come back respectful. The door is always open. Anyway, moving on. Like I said, parents have no right. You have every right to dictate what goes on in your home. That is nobody else's business. It isn't anybody else's business how you choose to raise your children, how your home operates. That is your business. When your children step out into the public square, it is now out of your hands, especially when they're adults. You have no right to go into a place of business and tell them what to do. That is none of your business. You don't have a right to march into a girl's face and tell her what she should and shouldn't tolerate from your son. That's none of your business. You have no right to march up to a guy and tell him what he should do, do shouldn't shouldn't deal with from your that's none of your business. Once they step into the public square, it is none of your business. You chose how you were going to raise your children exactly how you wanted. Just like guns, you took on that responsibility. And if you see nothing wrong with them being antisocial and having no regard for other people's feelings and thinking people and their feelings or their lives are a joke, have fun burying your child. I hope it's funny now. And I hope you, all the parents who want to live in denial, deny that. It's hard to deny caskets. It's hard to deny ashes and urns. Now it's too late. No parent has any right to tell anybody what to do with their property. You should have raised your children better. And again, it's your right and your business if you don't want to. If you want to raise troublemakers and criminals, that's your business. It is our business how we deal with your children. Anyway, moving on. The other case, the next situation is this. Rideshare, I honestly hope that it starts becoming very unpopular, but it probably won't, at least for a couple more years or more. But they soon will just have cars that drive themselves. So that might be what... I thought Uber wanted to do that anyway, but this was Lyft, I believe. So, Lyft driver almost gets killed by a crazy woman who busts shots out the window. Now, again, if you have lived a criminal past, you should not be allowed to use rideshare. You should not be allowed to work for rideshare. You should not be able to work for any of these types of apps, DoorDash, anything. Because those are the people who are making it bad. People with nothing to live for, people who scam the system and, and hurt other people. Now people may say they're genuine people who've done things wrong that are trying to make to, to make something of a song. At this point, it doesn't even matter because you're not making much money at this point anyway. But again, 
we have to think of people's safety. Do you want a registered offender going door to door? And I don't think they can actually. I, I, I think that I don't even, I don't know, so I'm speaking out of ignorance. I don't know if a registered blank offender could actually do one of those. But again, uh, certain people should not be doing these things or being allowed to use them because this happens. This, this happens. Crazy people, and we've seen for years, violent, crazy people beating up, murdering, rideshare, you know, drivers. And people want to say, oh, the essay situations, it was just a drive. No, it was going both ways. It was going both ways. And sometimes people would falsely accuse the driver of stuff because they were upset that they got kicked out. There are rude, disgusting people who should not be, again, people have the right to be whatever they want and behave however they want to. Yes, there's second chances, but there's consequences for actions and consequences for behavior. And there's consequences for the way people have chosen to live their life. It is a choice to evolve yourself in criminal activity, especially multiple times in a row. It is, that is a choice. No one is forced, unless you were a child and were used as some type of drug mule, or you were kidnapped from a different country and trafficked all over Kingdom Come, that's the only difference. Or you were truly in one of those rare situations of domestic abuse where you, like, this man was involved in the mafia and, like, there was everybody around, or, like, gang situations, like, everybody knew this dude. Okay, fine. Other than that, it was a choice. And there are consequences for choices. There are consequences for choices. There's a guy on here who's a trucker. He says he thinks certain crimes, like especially violent crimes, stalking, domestic abuse, things like that, should not be allowed in trucking. I know in Europe, you can't be a felon and drive a truck. Because there were serial killers in this country who were, well, he was a truck driver and he'd drive places and bump off people and then get right back in his truck and keep going. I mean, who's monitoring it? And there are people who choose trucking because it's a low bar of entry. How do we know the person in trucking, be they regardless of gender or race, is just going around harassing? They chose the dedicated route just to drive past their spouse or whoever, and they just harass them. And say, so, well, then they go to court and say, well, that's just my route. But they purposely chose that route. Just thoughts and opinions. And again, everybody is allowed to share their thoughts and opinions in the comments section. Just be respectful of mine because I'm not changing. I may change mine. It might depend on what you say. But tread lightly. If you're a sick person, you're just going to be blocked and deleted. I know that's not going to stop you because you're just going to come out under your millions of troll accounts. You will be documented, though. But I'll see everybody later.